what is up guys hey it's been a long ass time but uh i've realized that since uh the subi blew up we spent a rod bearing in the obs i realized that uh i haven't showed y'all my new daily yet so it's a 2013 tahoe ltz um i found out in getting this that all 2013 ltz's have the same drivetrain in them it's a 5.3 with the uh, 6L80 or whatever the uh, four wheel drive version is called. Um, it's got like 180,000 miles on it. It's got a lot, but you know, we know how to play with LS's. So if something goes wrong, we're probably gonna be able to fix it. Um, it's pretty decent. It's kind of beat up a little bit. The hood sucks. I don't know who tried to like scuff the clear coat at some point but it's like they used like 200 grit sandpaper or something i don't know what happened there and then for some reason the roof's the same way so i don't know i don't know what was going on or who thought about doing that but it's a uh, pretty simple it's a basic daily driver it works great i get in it i turn the key and i get to go to work it's got leather in it. The uh, heated and cooled seats was a big deal. I was looking for that and it had it, so excited about that. I uh, already switched the radio out. This is the radio from the Subaru. Um, it's been with me for like eight years now, so it just works. I was gonna get a new one, but kinda on a budget, you know what I'm saying? So we uh, kept it simple. And then in the back, you know, it's kind of, it's not the cleanest thing in the world, but I ain't worried about the floor mats. You know, we can change those out. You can see I'm SUV life. I'm just throwing my jackets and shit back here, but we're going to clean all this out here shortly. Cause we're going to get a, uh, we're going to get some subs going in here. Cause I need that bad. This one also has this stupid issue. Which I looked up and found out that that's a uh, really common thing. And the Tahoes and the Silverados and Sierras of this generation. And it's real freaking convenient because you can't buy just this piece. Like if I was to take the door panel off, I can't buy just that piece. You have to buy like the whole door panel. So I've seen some, uh, some do-it-yourself repairs and I think I'm going to do it eventually i'll record that of course whenever i get to it but basically you can uh get some uh, abs plastic some fiberglass resin some epoxy and uh, you can do a thing and make it pretty decent and luckily for me like my cover material is all still there so as long as i get like a brace or something in here just right then it'll look right it won't look totally crap passenger side is the same way but that's all right. Um, it's kind of it. simple. It's just a Tahoe stock. There's nothing done to the engine. I'm going to keep it that way. We ain't doing no air intake, no muffler, none of that. We're keeping it quiet, simple. Uh, I'm about to rip these two seats out, which conveniently GM made it so that you can just pull them out like that. So we're going to get those out the way here shortly and get us uh i'm loving this push button stuff we're gonna get some subs going in here um that's usually the first thing i do to every daily that i have is i gotta have audio in it i gotta have a lightning plug-in a usb plug-in for my phone play spotify or whatever and uh i gotta have some bass well, originally, you know, I finally got my big Tahoe, so I was like, well, I'm going to get a 15 and get that going. But, you know, to, to stay in budget and to be reasonable, I'm going to go ahead and uh, reuse my old box that was in the Subaru that had the 3 eighths in it. But uh, a funny, funny little obstacle had happened in that. So two of these eights were always supposed to be Chris's old uh, white beard. Kind of like as a Christmas present. Well, I had pussyfooted for about four years on delivering his Christmas present to him. But since the Subi went down and I pulled the box out, I was like, what better time than now than me give you your two eights back? So 
what we're going to do today, now that I've shown you all around that, there, there really ain't nothing to it. I ain't even going to pop the hood, man. It's just a 5.3 stock. There ain't nothing going on in there. Nothing special. We'll do a DOD delete soon, I can tell you that. But uh, this is what we got old Redbeard. <laughs> He's got a lot of shit in here, but... Uh, we got the two sound cube dates in here in a scar box, my dad. And it sounds pretty good, but that's two from that set of three. And the trick with it is, is I bought these these three sound cube dates at the same time. So they're all like sequential serial numbers. They were all they're the same power. They're the same voice coils. All that blah blah blah. Since then, sound cube has changed their model has updated or whatever and it's different now so i can't just put two new sound cubes in there and it won't match the third one the electric shit will be all off it just won't be right so i was like well check this out scars running a fourth of july sale so i was like hey how about i get you two brand new subs and then i get my old ones back these are on sale for a killer deal for 4th of July weekend. Went on Amazon. They got here in two days. So that's what's up. But I got Chris two fresh new 8s. Should be pretty stout. Pretty decent. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these brand new scars in Chris's truck. And then I'm going to get my sound cube 8s back out of there. Put them back in that box. And then I still have the amp from the Subaru that ran all those. And then I have the wiring kit now, so I have everything I need to get a little bit of bass in the Tahoe going. So, And then another note for, for anybody that's into bass or whatever, when I bought the four that are in that box, they're all dual 2 ohm. Well, so between the three of them, I wired them down to 1.3 ohms, as close as I could get to 1 ohm, and the amps we use are 1 ohm stable. So when I took the two out and put them in here, they're dual 2s. Well, if you put two dual twos together, the best you can do is half ohm or two ohm. So, um, I have them at two ohm on a 1200, so they're only getting like 600-ish, 700 a piece, or between the pair of them. So, it's not really doing much. These are 700 RMS. They look a little skimpy, but I bet they'll take 600 just fine. But I got dual fours, that way I can wire him down to one ohm. He'll be beating a little bit harder than he was before. And then that way I complete my setback and I'm running at 1.3 ohm. So I'm getting the most out of my 1200 that I can do with three subs. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I don't know if this will drag out into two videos or not. I'm going to try to kind of wrap it into one. But uh, I, I realize I haven't really covered much audio shit on the channel. So I figured this would be a good chance to show you all the Tahoe real quick. And then... Uh, do some little sub wiring and his stuff's easy all i gotta do is switch it out and i'll show you all the little wiring stuff we'll do but let's uh let's get into that all right we're real close about to drop them in um so these being dual voice coil and it's dual fours the reason i did that is so that i could get down to one ohm going out to the amp so the way that you do that um there's several apps um kicker u light is a really good app to have on your phone it has a wiring wizard it's free and like if you're de dealing with subs often that's a super awesome app to get because it gives you a sheet you type in if you have one sub two subs three four whatever you type in if you have a single or dual voice coil you type in what ohm load your voice coil is and it tells you how to wire it to get what result load so to get one ohm out of two dual four subs we connect all the positive posts on each voice coil together and all the negative posts together so that's all we did here i've got you know this positive and negative going over to this positive and negative and then we've got a jumper going out to the other sub positive and negative and then positive and negative out to the outside of the box um, you can check that with a multimeter if you want I don't need to because I looked at it. It's going to be what it's going to be. Um, so now we'll drop it in, get them screwed in. And then uh, we'll need to adjust the amp a little bit because the, the sound cubes were dual twos. So they were getting a little bit more juice than they needed 
just because they were inefficient being at two ohm instead of one ohm these are at one ohm and these are 350 rms 700 max so this amp is more than capable of maxing these out especially at one ohm so we got to be really careful with the gain um, and then check make sure we're not clipping all that stuff so we'll get them dropped in bolted in and then uh i'll pick you guys back up when we're playing with the amp all right so i'm gonna do this real quick because i kind of already set it up but for y'all that don't know how to set gains or like y'all have y'all set clipping and then you put your new subs in and in two weeks your shit's broke you blew your subs and all that y'all don't know what the fuck y'all is doing anyways here's a good way to figure that out you can google this you can youtube it you can look it all up but a good way to find what your amp gain should be set at when you turn your gain up on your amp you take the power of what you're trying to do so let's say these two subs are 350 rms or 700 watt max so we can go from 700 to 1400 watts this amp at one ohm will do 1250 to 1300 so what you do is you take that 1250 or 1300 and you divide it by the ohm load that you have it wired at i have it wired at one ohm so you take whatever that is the wattage times the ohm load so i'm at one ohm so i need to take 1250 and i need to find the square root of it so once you find the square root it's going to be some oddball number like 30 something this one was 35 so then you take a voltmeter and you put it on ac voltage this one does automatic and then you put them in your hot and negative ports of your amp like in the in the speaker channels where you would put your speaker wires and then you play a test tone for sub amps you do like 50 or 40 hertz i did a 40 hertz tone so we'll play that you should see 35 we got 28 so I could have turned it up more so what you do is you put those in the and if the gains turned all the way down you'll see zero zero volts so you'll slowly turn up your gain until you see the number that you need so let's say I need a 35 I would keep turning the gain up until I see 35 volts right there and that's what you that's what you should run at now these being brand new subs I had it turned down a little bit it's supposed to be 35 I left it at 29 it's real finicky like trying to do the adjustments like 29 to 31 29 to 32 30 whatever i tried to leave it at 30 but when i took the screwdriver out it went to 29 so i'm just going to leave it there that's fine i'll let chris bump this for a couple weeks like this and then we'll see where he's at if he wants to turn it up a little bit more i can turn it up until i get to that 35 once the subs are kind of broken so that's how you set that and that's it that's all you need to do to set your gain. Now, a fancy way to do that is to get the Steve Mead uh, gain, whatever you wanna call them, the gain tools. You can get those. Um, it's up to you if you wanna get them. I've always wanted them. I just never wanted to spend the money on them. And then I found out that I can do a simple calculation with a calculator and get the same result or a similar result the steve mead tools are very nice i'm not knocking them at all i'm not saying they're overpriced you get your money's worth for those tools um, if you're like an audio shop or you do a lot of audio all the time then it's worth it to buy those tools but for me i don't do it very often and i know how to do the calculation and that's close enough for me that's how i do it so um that's going to be it for this one I'm gonna show y'all a little something something give me just a second let me get to it I got these two bad boys right here so there's stickers of course this uh, round ones two and a half inch fits perfectly on a phone this one's three inch and it fits on a phone also you can see that the skull it's a uh, holographic too broke to be tired of course on both of them with the pink skull it cameras kind of being weird with it but anyways I have both of these stickers on the website right now i turn the website back on um, i let all the facebook and instagram snapchat homies get at it first uh, i realized that i didn't put a video up and ever show youtube that i have this stuff so 
These are on the website right now. Go to maddiexbuilds.com. The link's in the description. Support the build. Support the OBS. Um, we need a new motor right now. If y'all have missed that video, then be sure to go back and check it out. But we've got a spun rod bearing in this. Um, we haven't busted the pan off and, and took a good look at it yet, but we, uh, we spun a rod bearing. I'm pretty sure. So anyways, all the proceeds of you guys buying merch goes straight to the build. I don't spend it on other stuff. I don't buy other things with it. I don't pay bills with it. I put all the money that you guys spend on the website towards keeping the website up and buying more merch for you guys to take advantage of. Um, be sure when you go on there, if you guys are interested in these, go look at the drop downs. I have different deals for them. Like you can get one for this price or you can get two of them for this price or five of them for this price. So be sure you check that out. I have a couple of these shirts left. I'm gonna update the inventory before I upload this video. I have like, I know I have a 3X, I have a 4X, I have a couple XLs, and I think I have a medium or two. Um, there's not much left, but I do have them. So if you guys are interested, go on the website, check them out, and then I'll update my hat inventory too. I think I have a couple hats left. Guys, I really appreciate y'all sticking with me. I know the content slowed down, life's caught up. I done had a kid. I'm trying to be a good dad and a good husband, trying to help my wife out, trying to do all the work I can to try to get some money saved up so I can get back on the truck. Um, but I assure you guys, I haven't given up yet. I just, I have to make time to get out here and get away from them, you know, and take time away from the family to come out here and do this stuff. So just bear with me, we're getting there. The next couple videos I'm gonna do, um I'm, we're gonna get the subs in the tahoe um that'll probably be a pretty quick video i'll just show you how to run an amp wire kit most of y'all know how to do that but we're gonna put it up just for the couple people that want to know we're gonna pull the oil pan off of this and probably the heads and see if we can see the damage of what actually happened and figure out if this block is worth if it's close enough to just, you know, dingle hone and throw some bearings in or, or what, see where we're at with this one or if we need to go find another junkyard motor. And then we also got uh, interior door panels, finally. So shout out to the homie Pork and uh, his bro Luis. They both got me hooked up on these, sponsored them. So shout out to them. And uh, that's what we got coming up. Just bear with me, guys. I really appreciate all my OGs for sticking around and hanging out so long. And I appreciate all the support that y'all have given me to this point. I know it's been, we're 2023 now, so it's been three years of trying to get this truck going. And then I've drug y'all through all my other stuff, the Subaru. We got the Tahoe now. We still got to find something to do with the Rabbit someday. Who knows? And then uh, Austin done got him a pit bike. So just stay tuned, guys. Bear with me. We're getting there. And uh, yeah, I'm going to quit rambling. Other than that, peace out, be human, and we'll see y'all next time.